Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this acrylic painting vi video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a mountain stream. Should be fun. I'm trying to keep it a little bit on the easier side for beginners. I've got my husband Mark with me today. Hey there, everybody. He's man and chat for our live show. Sorry, we're starting a little bit late. Well, actually early for those who are not watching live, but <laughs> later than we had intended. <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, so let's get started. <laughs> All right, so here is my reference photo. Um, and I think I'm going to, uh, I might change up this portion up here, I'm not sure. What we could do is make this sky if we wanted to, instead of another mountainside. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure yet. So I guess I probably should figure it out because we're gonna be painting here in a minute. <laughs> Let's go over our paints really quick. We've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, zinc white. Uh, I threw out some cadmium red and cadmium orange, just kind of at the afterthought for some of the flowers. But we've got quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, uh, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, uh, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and carbon black. Those will be our main colors. And then, like I said, we can kind of add whatever colors we want for our flowers. So I decided to kind of add a couple other colors so we could have more of a range of our color choices for flowers. So we can eat filbert, the number four filbert, a number two bright, and a number two round. And then we'll need some sort of a scruffy brush. So you could use, um, Deerfoot stippler, I like. Um, something like um, a stencil brush even will work. Or a large uh, brush like this. You know, anything with these kind of stiff bristles for um, stippling. And then um, you're going to want a fan brush. So I like the the um, Princeton 10 odd or number two um, bristle fans. Because they're a little bit stiffer as well. And then I've got some of the, this is another stippler. This is the number uh, quarter inch Willows blender. And then I've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle bright in the velvet touch line. So any of those will work. I don't know if we're gonna need this, but I'm gonna have a round out here, another smaller round number one in the select line, just in case. So that'll give us a good start. I'm going to go ahead and just lightly sketch out where I want my hills to be. And we're going to kind of put in an under layer. So our stream is going to come up about two thirds of the way, or maybe a little bit less than two thirds. It'll kind of be right about there. This, if this is the halfway mark. It's just going to be kind of maybe just a little bit higher than that. And it's going to meander kind of down this way in and out like this coming around like this so just kind of a zigzaggy line there it's going to get bigger as we get you know closer to us and then up in here we're not we're not even going to really see where it starts we're just going to see some rocks where that are kind of coming over and and covering up the edge of it and so i want a hill oh yeah it's going to have to go up a lot higher than that Hill there, and then one kind of crisscrossing this way, and then another one coming down like this. So there's our three main hills, and then like I said, we could do whatever we want up here. We could make this um, sky if you want to, um, or we can just kind of leave it with the, I'm not going to draw on anything else but that right now. What do you think, honey? Should we do sky or should we just do mountain? Mm, I think just mountain. Mountain? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to use the phthalo green, add some phthalo blue, and then grab some burnt umber. That'll give us a nice dark green. And I'm just going to go ahead and start slapping it on there then. And I want to use a little bit more blue in this farther um, area. That'll kind of give us the illusion of depth. Anytime we get a little bit, you know, farther away from our foreground, 
using blues or purple will help give us that illusion of that it's farther away. So apologize to our live folks that were waiting for us to get our act together this morning. We had all kinds of issues. <laughs> it's just one thing. I can't just say it was one thing. Had all kinds of problems. Camera problems. <laughs> audio issues it was it was a mess and issues of people not being in the building there was just all kinds of things going on so <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically we're probably not going to do the early live show on Saturdays anymore it's just we uh we just need well to. we just you don't expect a camera cable to go bad right exactly yeah. it's like why is it not working <laughs> All right, give ourselves a little bit more time to get get our act together. All right, I'm going to use a little bit of the green here with the burnt sienna this time. A little more earthy tones for the hills down here. And I'm really not worried too much about the actual drawing at this point. I'm just sort of trying to get in some darker colors to go in underneath our highlighted hills once we get those in. So I want these dark colors underneath so we have something for our lighter colors to play against. Otherwise, it'll just look flat. Got to have those nice dark colors in there. I watched Bob Ross this week with my Facebook group, Thankful Art. And uh, he started his canvas with, like, it was black when he did his... A lot of <clears throat> a lot of his landscapes like this. It's like I need to start doing that. <laughs> it gives you a good head start for sure. Yeah, why why did he do that? Well, just because of that reason. You know, you got to if you've got depth. dark already, it just saves you one step, you know. Then you can put your light colors on top and it makes everything kind of pop forward. So you gotta get those dark colors in there anyways. So it just kinda gives you a head start on it. I'm using burnt umber back here. I I was I did not know this. I never noticed this before, but I but I noticed it <laughs> watching him because it's been it's been years since I've watched Bob Ross. I, he was my hero. I used to watch him every Saturday. But uh, he also does the whispering thing as he gets going. <laughs> he starts to get softer and softer. Softer. <laughs> <laughs> like yes <laughs> Bob so, is my man <laughs> he gets it <laughs> so I feel for their audio people then yeah exactly <laughs> I know they're suffering yeah <laughs> I was channeling Bob Ross and didn't even know it <laughs> that was great it just tickled me because I was just getting teased for that <laughs> oh he was soft spoken as it was anyway so you know and then he got a little softer as he went along <laughs> it's a it's a very relaxing he actually said that he was in the army and he used painting as a way to re, um, find peace he was in the army for or actually not the army the uh, air force he's a sergeant hmm. drill sergeant if you can imagine and he said he won't he wouldn't uh he wouldn't teach wouldn't painting that way. He wouldn't yell anymore <laughs> after he started painting. <laughs> That'd be an interesting TV series if he was yelling at everybody. Get those paints out there. <laughs> you call that a tree. <laughs> Do not make me pull out the white. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me just over you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> Drop and give me 20. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I want everybody who's painting right now to stop and give us 20 push-ups. <laughs> oh, gosh. We'll wait. I won't ask anybody <laughs> to do something I can't do, so. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> okay, so now I've mixed my uh, thalo blue with burnt sienna gives us this dark deep teal color nice color for the under 
water portion of our stream here. And I'll also work with our rock, so I'm just going to kind of put it wherever those colors are. Not worry too much about blending this in at this point. We'll cover up all our edges later, but we're just trying to get these colors down. And just go side to side in that way. If anything you know, streaks through or shows after we get this down, it'll look like it's part of our plan, you know. Um, you notice when I put my heels, oh, look at that. I just took the paint right off of there. Big old thumbprint. Should I leave that? <laughs> it's like instead of signing my name, I just leave a big old thumbprint on it. <clears throat> Did you know that was still wet? No, <laughs> obviously not. Uh, but I was going to say, when I did my hills, these ones I kind of swept in, down this direction, then these ones I kind of came down this way, and then these ones kind of came down this way. So I was using those natural, um, hill, natural motion of the, um, the way the grass was growing to kind of put in those colors. And same thing with this water, just side to side. And that way you get these kind of horizontal lines in the water. And if any of it shows, it'll seem like we meant to do that. Okay, let's just grab some more of the yellow green there and touch up that hillside. There we go. Boom. No problem. Magic. All right, this probably needs to be a little bit darker back in here. I'm gonna maybe even grab a little bit of black, just a little. I don't like using black much, but sometimes you just need it. It can dull your colors. That's the only reason why, you know, it can, you know, kind of makes your painting, the uh, paint colors a little bit more flat looking when you use black. So I just use it more sparingly. I like to use colors to make my dark areas whenever I can. Okay, so there we go. So now we got some dark. <clears throat> dark color in there. Very good. I think I'm going to hand this off to you, honey, and have you dry this for me, if you don't mind. Okie dokie. I didn't warn you there. Okay. All right, so I think when I see a painting like this, uh, or, a, you know, an image like this, um, one of the first things I look at is what are the colors that I'm seeing in these dark areas. So I kind of scope those out first. You know, of course, uh, the composition is something that I always kind of want to find. Um, I want to find a photo that I don't have to do a lot of editing to. So this one was nice because it was a really nice uh, composition. I liked it. I found a lot of stream. I looked at a lot and lots and lots of stream photographs uh, and this one was the one that kind of appealed to me the most because it had more of the like up close detail, a lot of rocks. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the streams like started way far away and they only were like this wide in the, you know, in the front. So I wanted something where you really got a good wide um, angle on the stream itself. But uh, I look at the kind of dark areas to kind of figure out what those are first. And that will help you, if you start doing that, uh, that will help you get that depth that you want in your paintings. Because if you only look at the, these top colors and focus on those, those will be the, the ones that you tend to put down first. And then you'll end up without these dark pockets. You can see how even in these light areas, you've got all these little pockets of dark in there. And if you, okay, go ahead. Oh, that would make an interesting painting. <laughs> you start it upside down. Yeah, it's interesting how <coughs> you just rotate it like that. It looks totally different. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely. Sorry about that. All right, so 
let's see, let's start putting in our field stuff. So we'll start putting in our grasses and stuff. Um, we'll do a few basic and then we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth because we got to get these rocks in here too. Um, some of the grasses are going to be behind the rocks and some of them are going to be over the rocks. So we'll put the grasses in a few times uh, in this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that blue and I'm going to grab some. That's the phthalo blue. Actually, let's go ahead and get the ultramarine. So it's already got some purple in it. Ultramarine, doxazine purple. And I'm already out of green. I'm going to need a lot more green. <laughs> Now this green is one that you can mix, so if you don't have this color, you can use, um, you can use Thalo Blue to mix it. Thalo Blue and some of the cadmium yellow light, something like that, will get you a, a green that's very similar to this, so it doesn't have to be this color exactly. I'm going to grab just a little bit of white. And that way, uh, once you mix your dark colors, if you add just a tiny bit of white to it, you can kind of tell what that color is going to be. And then you can adjust it if you want it a little bit more purple like I did there. And then I'm just going to kind of lay in some. And really, this stuff back here is not going to be super detailed. You're not going to be able to see what it is exactly. This is so far away, so we can just kind of tap in. I want it to be very similar to that color that I already put in. So, And I'm tapping in that direction of the hillside, kind of pulling down. Let's grab a little bit of green. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of the light unbleached titanium. I always want to call it light ultramarine and call ultramarine light ultramarine unbleached titanium. I don't know why. They don't sound anything alike, but I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. <clears throat> Actually, I think I want a different brush. That's not doing it for me. So let's try this one. And which one is this one? This is the number four filbert. And why wasn't the other one doing it for you? It just wasn't covering the area big enough that I wanted it to cover, and I wasn't getting the look that I wanted on it. So I think I want more, more kind of blocked in color, not not so stippled in that area back there. And I don't really want to mess with it too much because it's kind of far away, but we do have to give it some attention because it is taking up a good amount of our space back here. So I'm just going to kind of use this brush and do some sweeping, almost like rock-like sections. You're just seeing kind of some lighter areas back here. Let me use some of the ultramarine blue and some of this color. I want it just slightly lighter. We'll probably need to add this a couple of times, but <clears throat> I'm going to do like little dabs so that it looks like maybe some rocks are kind of coming up this way. It looks like in our photograph we've got some rocks in this area and right in there too so I'm just gonna dab this color on with this brush and that way we'll get a little bit bigger spots okay so the reference photo uh-huh where did you get it I got it on um, Shutterstock, Shutterstock so I bought okay. it yeah I purchased the use of it Okay. So you can use it for yours, but just don't don't uh, share the photo. Like, you know. 
It's available on Patreon. Um, you can find it there if you want to have the actual reference photo um, to use in your own paintings to, you know, as a reference. You can, I provide all of my reference photos and my finished painting for Patreon uh, followers on there for the $5 level folks. So $5 or $10 level. Right. $5 or above, I should say. Right. Okay. All right. That'll be good for now. I feel like it still needs a little bit of work. I think I'm going to do a little bit more like... I kind of am wishing I did Sky now. I think Sky would have been easier. Well, only because it would have been much more easy to identify what it is. You know, this is very kind of amorphous shapes and stuff. It's not really got a, a whole lot of detail. But you don't want it to look like kind of a big blob of nothing. So it's kind well, of hard it, to... Is it too late now? No. I could probably still do it. You want to do it? It's, me personally, I'm not going to do it now. I'll watch you do it. <laughs> but... All right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's kind of like I tell the people at work. I say, you know, we need to do this. And I usually put in parentheses. You. You. Because you. <laughs> <laughs> you are the boss, right? Right, just to, all. just to clarify the, <laughs> the subject that we'll be doing the work. We. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Clarify who's actually doing what. <laughs> I'm doing the telling. You, you'll be doing the doing. <laughs> okay, I'm liking that better already. We'll just put a little bit of white in our valley here. Why not, right? Man, what? that just took a whole other twist. <laughs> you didn't expect that. I look did down, you? check on chat, and nobody expects <laughs> the blue sky. Pop out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Boom. Blue sky. So, I mean, actually, that's a very interesting thing that you did there is that, you know, you were starting down one direction. Right. And you mm -hmm. said, you know what? I'm not really loving this. Right. So let me just do this a little bit, and you just turned it, you know. Well, and that I do that a lot, actually, when I'm painting. You know, this this is this is kind of an unnatural situation in some ways, you know, painting in front of an audience like this. Because, you know, normally if you were in your home studio and you got to that point, um, you know, you'd make these choices. You wouldn't really worry about it because you don't have anybody for painting along or you know, following what you're doing, you can make these kind of choices a little bit easier. So I tend to not make make drastic changes, although I do that a lot when I'm when I'm in the middle of a painting. You know, on my own, um, I make all kinds of changes to the paintings. A lot of times, I'll um, change whole sections and change the whole composition around, move leaves of flowers, and you know, do all kinds of stuff. You know. Uh, Acrylics are nice that way because they do lend themselves to making changes. You can kind of put the... There we go. All right. We're just going to call that good. Um, I may wish that I had you to dry that again, but... Yeah. Nah, it's all right. I think we'll survive. But we'll Be look down here on our... Well, because somebody commented on the last video uh -huh. about the... The lack of stick man. I saw that comment. Mm. Did we? We didn't. We didn't get our comments ready either, did we? <laughs> <sighs> no, the time for that was taken up by trying to get stuff to work. Yep. Yep. We had planned on sharing comments today. I, we can wow. still read them. I can still read them. Okay. Well, I'll yeah. read the ones that talk about how awesome I am. Okay. You find those. Yeah. The, the, I know I mean, if you knew how to work them into OBS, it's pretty easy, but I don't know if you knew how to do that. So How to do screenshots. and You can you can add little best. files in there pretty yeah. easily. 
Yeah, I don't want to be trying to do that live. It okay. won't come out as good as this guy did. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am. I can take over. Dry that brush out completely. What were you saying? Said I could take over painting while you uh-huh. loaded the files. Oh, we're going to have to get you to mm-hmm. trained on OBS so you yeah. know how to use it. Uh, okay. Hope it doesn't cut into my video playing time. <laughs> <laughs> These brushes work better if they're dry. Also, if they're brand new, if you get one straight out of the package, it's going to look like this. It's going to look all kind of clean and real pressed together like this. Just abuse the heck out of it. Push it all apart. Smush it down. These brushes are meant to be kind of abused. Um, they work better the more uh, fuzzy they get. So go ahead and just smush it out like that. You see the difference? Give it a bad hair day. You know, smush it into something. Really kind of... And I really don't worry about cleaning these out as well because I kind of... The more paint gets down in here, the more those bristles flare out too. So... Fuzzier the better. You want afro hair on your brushes here. Let me use a little bit of this thalo green and I've added a little bit of the thalo or the cadmium yellow light. That just gives it a little bit brighter color. Add a little bit of thalo blue just to make it cut it a little bit. Let's go ahead and I lost all of this up here, so I'm gonna have to kind of put that back in. That's pretty close to my original color, so I need to go a little bit lighter. With that, let's go for some. There we go. And here comes your conditioner. Sorry, I'm thinking here. We'll just say thanks to everybody who's joined us today on this. Adding be- some white here. Beautiful Saturday. Yes. In July 2018. And to all of you in the future, welcome. <laughs> I knew you were going to watch. Hopefully, you all are having a good, happy. Saturday or whatever day it is you're having, mm-hmm. whatever day it is you're watching. It could be a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> it could be your birthday. <laughs> you know, whatever. Whatever day it is. Mm-hmm. Gonna leave some of these dark areas here and just kind of do some like little overlapping hills. That's what gives it kind of depth. Doing these stacked sections here. I'm gonna bring that all the way in here. Yeah, we hope if you're new to the channel that you'll subscribe and come back and join us for more. After the show, you can go and check out all the several hundred other videos that we have. More yellow on this one, more the sunlight's hitting this side. And when you're tapping with this, the key is just to load it, just load the heaviest paint up here, really not loading this back part at all. And that way you can kind of direct where these this goes a little bit better. You can control it.
So since you put That's it in the good. sky, I guess there's no room for flowers now. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh, well. Well, too bad. We'll come back next time. <laughs> <laughs> These, there's a couple spots here that are kind of catching some light too, so I'm just kind of tapped in. All right, so there we go. Got our kind of basic greenery in, some blue sky. You see how that paint is really darkening up there. It looks a lot darker than it what did when I put it on there. I might need to add some more white. Look at all that white kind of just got absorbed into that color down there. And we're out of side cam because we're that's not working today so figured we stalled enough for time we so <laughs> we just didn't want to waste any more time trying to get everything working yep today so side cam will come back next week but for now he's gone what were you saying oh somebody wanted to know would there be splatters ooh Oh, uh, yeah, probably some down here. Probably a little bit. Oh, yeah, we can always fit in splatter somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Why hmm, not? What's that? Oh, is this cake? Cake? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nobody has any clue what, what. I wonder if anybody knows that reference. Yeah, um, yeah, we won't say. You'll get 20% off the cost of today's video <laughs> if you know that reference. Who said that? All right. Uh, I'll give you a hint. We went and saw him this summer. Or this spring. I guess it was. No, it was summer, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't it was. Know. It was sometime last earlier month. this year. It was last month. Okay, so I've mixed up some of my favorite gray. It's that blue gray color with burnt umber and burnt uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. It makes this really pretty gray. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of our rocks now. Since we've got our water in, we can kind of start setting in where some of these rocks are going. Some of them are bigger than others. And they're coming right down over and into the water. So we'll definitely have to kind of put some, you know, greenery over overlapping these, but now we're just trying to get these in here where we want this color to be. And really this whole front part of the stream is rocks. So there's one big one that comes right down in there like that. And the bottoms are kind of flat. So you'll do the top parts can be kind of rounded. They can be sort of angular, whatever you want. But then the bottoms are going to be kind of flat because of the angle that we're looking at them at. I talked about the angles last week a little bit. You know, about... If you're looking at them straight down, then you'll see kind of the, the whole shape of the outline of it. But when you're looking at something from the side, you can see the top portion, but the bottom is going to be flat, flat. Or look flat-ish. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but it's going to look kind of more. So this water is going, it's going to come right around here. This is, I want this one a little bit higher. I want this one a little bit lower. So that gives it some place to snake through here and then back down and these are overlapping quite a bit right there okay so there's another big rock right here and I want this green to come down here now that I'm seeing it I want that green down in here what are you laughing at? We're having a difficult time spelling things correctly in chat, so... Oh, okay. Sorry for the distraction. Thank you. The 
Stop giggling. You make me wonder what you're doing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mark's having all the fun over there. Chatting it up. Okay. There we go. Go back to making rocks. Here Got we go. Tongue click there. That was some serious thinking. <sighs> This is the unbleached titanium mixed with this. Just so I can kind of see where I'm putting it up in here. This is kind of coming down around. It's doing all this interesting stuff. Coming straight down right here. looking at my picture, trying to see you my were, references. You were whispering to yourself. Was I? Mm -hmm. Right here, then right here. So getting this rock in here. This kind of comes down around, kind of comes out and then back straight down into the water. What was I saying to myself? I don't even remember talking to myself. Uh, I couldn't fully make it out, but you're like, I <laughs> <laughs> it was good whatever it was it obviously was helping I need to leave myself room for my waterfall in the front here might be bringing my rocks down too far this back up. These are way too close. I'm going to do that there. And this is going to be my cutoff right here. So I'm going to put a line across so I know sort of where to start my boulders that are coming down the waterfall. So my waterfall is going to start right here. So I've got a rock under here. There's a lot of rocks in this one. So could you, when you have a moment, go back over your special formula for Angela's favorite gray? Uh, burnt umber and, and ultramarine blue. Pretty much equal parts. If you want it more blue, you add more of the blue. If you want it more brownish, you add more of the brown. So that was pretty, pretty simple. Taking up this whole corner. It's got all kinds of interesting angles in it. Another one right here. And then another big one sitting next to this dude right here. And then the rest of this water is going to have kind of smaller ones.
really not a whole lot of water in this waterfall. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of rocks. It's 90% rocks and 10% water. <laughs> so, if you feel like you've got a, no a lot of rocks, then you're probably doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> the old mountain stream. Yeah. We, yeah. I'll talk about that later. All right, so that's good. Let's put a couple of them up here. There's a couple of rocks sitting up on the bowl, on the mountainside there. Let's put in our a little bit more of the white up here. I feel like it could go with one more coat of that white. A little bit of white, a little bit of water. Got a little little bit of a yellow blue just to kind of cut it so it's not pure white. Oh, they want to know is Angela's favorite gray close to Payne's gray? A Payne's gray is black and ultramarine, so yes, it's just blue. It's just brown instead of black. So yes. Same under color, just not as, the black just makes a little bit more of a uh, dull, you know. I, I like the warmness of the, that it, that the ultramarine blue or the burnt umber adds to it. blue so if you've got this situation going on you just get the color that you want to blend down into it so get as close to that as I can and then I'm going to work it back down into that wet paint that'll merge those two while they're still wet even put clouds in there if we wanted to but I'm not going to I don't think just want it kind of as long as we go side to side anything that kind of is streaked or whatever will kind of look like maybe there's some of those clouds that what are those clouds called that stray stratus I don't know some of those long streaky white clouds that sort of form up in the sky. I'm not up on my cloud facts today. Not either. I miss that. Actually, I, I'm not Good. not joking. I totally miss that part in school. We moved and we uh, I missed whatever it was when we learned the about the clouds because it was on the AC ACT, so obviously I was supposed to have learned it at some point, but I didn't know any of that. We moved. I went to three different high schools, so there's <laughs> no telling what I missed. <laughs> I probably missed a lot of <laughs> basics. <laughs> so, real quick, you know, when you're trying to lighten up thalo blue, mm -hmm. is it better to use an, like unbleached titanium? You can, yeah. You can? Okay. Is It'll it? give you more of a yellowish color. Okay. Unbleached titanium has has yellow undertones ish so you know I didn't use it here because I don't want my sky to look greenish you know but so you said undertone is ish what you said undertones ish is that a word yeah I mean it's got it's got I mean you know I'm brown not a, in it too you know I'm not a reader so I don't know if that's a real word or not <laughs> Undertone ish, I'm probably is not a word. Okay. But Shakespeare made up his own words too, so I can do it. You can do it, I can do it, right? Because I can put ish at the end of anything. Exactly. Okay. So make it a word. <laughs> exactly ish. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm a little bit like two steps behind what I'm doing today because we started late and I was so, so 
concerned yeah, about that. I, I didn't really like prep like I do normally when I start a painting. I kind of sit down and... When you get out of your routine. Exactly, yeah. When you get out of your routine, you kind of feel a little bit at odds and ends today. All right, let's mix up some more of this gray because we're out of it. We used I'm, it all up. I'm adding that to our color list. What? Angela's favorite gray. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like that name too. That's a good one. All right, so we've added. We're going. We're going with burnt or uh, unbleached titanium here. So got this kind of lighter color. start and I've got my angle brush still I'm gonna start laying in at an angle and just very lightly skimming on my rocks light parts are going to be on the top obviously where the lights hitting the top of the rock so that's what I'm trying to hit with this color right now all these areas where there might be some light hitting a rock I'll do these ones in blue over here so for now I'm just gonna do some of these thinking so I can be talking about <coughs> down below <coughs> the video for all you newcomers there's a uh, all the paints and brushes and stuff that Angela is using in today's video and also links to Amazon to buy some of that stuff if you don't have it and the brush guys there's mm -hmm. a separate link where there's a link to the list of Angela's recommended brushers and you get five percent off with the code Angela's Fine Art. Angela Fine Art. Angela Fine Art. It sits down there. It's Make sure you do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Not the way I said it. <laughs> and also, of course, links to Facebook groups, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all the social media places. Yes. So you can check in. And on the Facebook group, share your paintings that you've done and following Angela's tutorials and are you over 12,000 yet? I don't know. In that group? There's a lot. I'd just say we have a lot of fun in there. It was fun watching Bob together this week. All right, so... <coughs> Keeping these angular, that's the main thing. That's the nice thing about using a brush like this when you're doing this, because you get these like nice, sharp, clean edges. All of these kind of angular edges will kind of help with that feeling of rock. Like, you know, just immediately looks like rock when you're using these kind of sharp edges on your rocks so trying to stay away from the back side because I want to do the, the blues in that area and really not much of this is going to get a lot of highlight on this side because this is our shadow side 
um, but some of these in the middle here are definitely getting some light, so. So don't put some darkness under some of these pebbles here, too. What? I was say that, remind everybody that tomorrow is the bonus Patreon video. Yes. If you're part of our Patreon crew. crew. $5 level or above. Right. You'll have the link to the video for tomorrow. It's a continuation part two. Yes, I need the, to send that out today. Again, remind me. I already have it posted, okay. but I need to do it again just to make sure people, new people, can yeah. get it. Continuing with the flowers. Oh, yeah. Yep. I don't know what's over there. Show it if you want, but... Okay, I'll go grab it. Okay. All right. This one's a little bit brighter than the others. So I just showed the painting to myself. It looks really good. Yeah. You you'll want to you want to join up and paint along. Mark Mark went and looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a purpley blue. Purpley. It's a, it's a hydrangea. It's supposed to be purpley. See, there we go. So we'll be finishing it up. We'll do a bunch of detail on the leaf, and then we'll finish up all of these petals that we still have to do. And in the end, it'll be about a four to five hour total time. Yeah, about that. About that. It uh, absolutely blows my mind. Why? Well, you know, just... For non-artists like me, you look at a small painting like that. It's like, oh, that's thirty minutes. Well, right, right, yeah, because it's small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we I relate the size of it to the complexity. Uh huh. Well, and that's why I always had a hard time kind of uh, charging by size on my paintings because I, you really can't can't do that in in some you know with art. A lot of times, it's just you know. I could have a really large painting that took me two hours, and I could have a small painting like that that took me five. You know, size really doesn't matter all that much when it comes to pricing. You just never know until you get, you know, get in there. And uh, get working on it. And it's cool watching those black blobs turn into now what your mind thinks are Versus rocks. These are rocks just because of the ang angles that we're putting on there. Right. Because we're putting them all on one side. So you notice we're leaving these dark areas on this back side. So we're getting this illusion of darkness in between. We're leaving spaces in between them. So we have room for our, uh, you know, our shadows to rest in there. And then we're doing all of these very angular shapes. We're doing... Using this brush, I can get all kinds of different shapes out of it. And by going straight down, I can get kind of a square. By doing it at an angle, I can get kind of a triangle shape or a diamond shape. Um, if I go in even more shallow, I can get kind of a even more. I can use the tip to, to uh, do dots. If I go straight down uh, or if I kind of turn it as I'm pulling it I can get kind of rounded edges um, there's a lot of I really like the this the angle brush for um, it's kind of one of the most versatile brushes I think for working on landscapes and and such like this it's just I don't like to have to clean out my brushes and reload and you know so this way I can kind of get get 
do this whole thing with just this one brush almost. picture here. Okay, I'm right here. There we go. Why are you laughing at me? Why are you so funny? <laughs> so, so funny. really interesting angles happening so this is this one here this one's got kind of a highlighted part right here kind of coming straight across and over and if you kind of lift up your brush as you're doing this too you can get these kind of more broken looking sections so I want to go back in with my brighter color and just kind of add some of this really bright color in a few spots. Just all unbleached titanium here. And you don't really have to worry about uh, where these start and stop right here because we're going to put greenery over the top so we'll have all of our flowers and greens and things happening that will help disguise where these rocks and things start and stop so and then this one over here has big flat area there and then a little space a little bit of right here then some space and then another big area there So let's grab my, oh, not that color, my ultramarine blue. Mix a little bit of this gray in there, just a little. So it's got that brown in there. And I'm gonna use this light, I almost said it again, light ultramarine, it's not light ultramarine, unbleached titanium. We're making the blue right now for our shadow side. Our shadow side's still going to have light areas, but this blue will make them look like they're in shadow more, which they are. So that helps with that. <laughs> okay, so I've got a little bit lighter version, a little bit darker version there. And we're going to start using this on the rocks over here now. brighter areas we can kind of use it up here to kind of 
add some of the lighter spots. Little dab, dots and dabs, really hard to kind of give you an exact, you know, do this exactly with this because it's a lot of this, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. So you're just going to have to, you know, look at some rock shapes, look really closely at, you know, some of these shapes. And what I'm picking out now are these shapes here so I'm not looking at the the whole thing I'm really trying to focus in on each individual part of it now and try to pick out these really odd shapes that are happening in each one of these and I'm not really doing them all I'm just sort of picking out a few that seem the most uh, prominent I don't want to cover up all of my dark areas, so I want to make sure I'm leaving enough dark in there because there is a lot of dark on these rocks. So if you get too much of this light area, you may have to go back in and kind of touch back up some of the dark. just using this blue in a few of these areas where there is some light hitting it but it's it's reflected light maybe it's picking up the color from the pool or the water or the sky who knows but it's looking a little bit of blue these wet rocks will will pick up the colors of the water and the you know and the reflections that happen on that wet part of them These are more browns over here, so I'm not going to do much of this blue over there. Those are getting a lot of the bright sunlight. But I do want to do more of this blue over here. And just hitting this opposite side. A lot of the blue on this side, a little bit in some of the shadows over here, but not as much. Okay. Let's go with a little bit of the lighter blue now. So this is the color plus some white or light off terrain unbleached titanium I said it again why 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 do I do that it's like ornaments 
It's the same thing. I get these little word blurbs in my head and I can't get them out. And then I keep saying the wrong thing over and over again. <sighs> so annoying. Hey, I'm just glad you got my name right. That's true. I do call Spencer Scooter all the time and vice versa. Yeah. It'd be kind of awkward if you call me like Bob or Phil or <laughs> George. Hey, George. <laughs> I don't think. I call you Mitch. That was your character in that <laughs> Ghost Recon that you like to play. Okay. I do remember that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I think we're pretty good here. Let's put some really bright on this guy over here. <laughs> Just skimming the tops of these rocks with some really bright color now. You okay? <coughs> Did you swallow wrong? Yeah, I have a drinking problem over here. <laughs> All right. Going down in here with some For some of my water to go, don't I? I'm kind of getting a lot of. All right, let's grab some burnt umber now, and you can see where we can add a little bit more of the burnt umber to our gray. So we've got, you know, this was the was, this was still the gray that we were doing because it still had some of that burnt umber in it. It wasn't just ultramarine blue. Um, so now we're going to add the burnt umber and do more of a burnt umber uh, leaning dark brown leaning gray. It's all still the same gray, but we're just kind of changing the concentration of brown and blue to get these different tones out of it more brown now. This will warm these rocks right up. And we can also add, which we might, add some, some uh, glazing over the top of it to just kind of add that much, one more level of detail. We'll see if we need it or not. We might in this darker areas and some of these rocks. It's just adding more of this brown Oops, it's off the camera there, sorry. Okay, I think we're good. Pretty happy with those. Pretty cool. Isn't that fun? So now we can go in and if we want to darken up any areas, I'm just going to go ahead and use the carbon black since it's out. Let me grab some burnt umber. I'm out of burnt umber here. We could use our shadow color, but this will give us a little bit darker. Even still. A little bit of black, a little bit of burnt umber. Water it down. You can use glazing liquid if you want. And we can go in and just going to glaze over some of the shadow areas to deepen them up. 
we've got those highlights in so this what this will do is just kind of set give it another tone over the top set back some of those highlights just a little bit doing mostly the bottoms of them a few little cracks you could draw lines with this color so if you wanted to have some areas where it looked like your rock had some lines in it you know like little veins or things like that you could use this color to do that So you can see the rocks where I've done it and the rocks where I haven't. It makes a difference, doesn't it? This is where you can kind of separate out your rocks, give them a little bit more shape. You've got those, you've got those highlights in there, but you can just kind of shape them out, make them look a little bit more rounded if you want, or a little bit more square, just all kinds of things you can do with them. Just by adjusting the shadows on them. Let's do this one down here. So this one's got a nice dark area right in here that kind of fades up into the, some of this lighter area. some dark areas in our water right here. Because there's some dark rocks there, but we're not really seeing the them because they're under the water. So we still want to have the indication that they're there, but I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Well, no. That's good enough. Get some of that really dark in here. So our sky is pretty good. Let's put in our pine trees. So I'm gonna grab that yellow, green, and black. Give that really dark pine green color. And I'm watching Bob. I'm gonna try Bob's technique for these trees. He used a lot of paint on his fan brush so he like scooped it up really thick and let's see it right here this happy little tree is gonna live right in this area right. maybe his... he lives right here maybe he's got a friend next to him because we all need friends and turn it sideways there. Oh, it does work better having a lot of paint on your brush. Look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. That worked good. Okay. So we'll give him a little friend right here. Maybe he lives right here. <laughs> give him the snow. <laughs> the 
that's how I said. That's what he says. And just get wider as we go down. I'm going to turn it sideways there. Leave plenty of space in between our little... Oh, oh that was a good catch. Uh, <coughs> space in between our levels of our branches there. So we get... gonna do a whole lot but I do want to do one up here too there's one right here that's pretty tall so I'm gonna kind of do this stem down it lives right up here on the hillside all by himself uh. <laughs> the beautiful view of the stream exactly tap 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 side to side good. Right. Let me see. Go ahead and zoom out there, honey, so we can see the whole thing. I want to see the whole kind of composition here. I kind of feel like we could maybe put one little one over here, too. Let's put another little one right here. Maybe he lives right here. That's a very bop thing to say, isn't it? Maybe he lives right there. All right, I like that because we got uh, different levels, different sizes. We got five of them, so they're an odd number. I'm happy. Okay, so let's use this color and I'm going to tap in some shadows around my rocks. This is my greenery going over the top of some of these rocks just a little bit here and there where it might be noticed coming up from these rocks you're going to have some kind of shadows in this greenery sort of behind them I'm going to do some of this darker down in here. This hillside. Just tap in some darkness to kind of camouflage where those live. Kind of deepen up that color down there. Tap them into our their scenery there so that they look like they belong. And then darken up this kind of slope here around these rocks. Do the same thing here. Kind of give this guy some shadows to live next to him. There we go. It's working. It's looking good. So. Just working in some shadows into our grasses. There we go. Very good. And then we've got some right here. You can even pull up and get start getting some of our our flower stem areas. Some of these areas closest to us, we're gonna have add some water to this so that they actually kind of come off the brush a little bit. We're gonna have some grasses up in here. I'm just gonna put them in dark first and then we'll add the other color to them in a minute. Get some of that in between our rocks here. Just anywhere where your rock is kind of touching the grass, you kind of want to do some of this color. Just 
at least underneath. It doesn't have to be on the top because that part is going to be hitting, you know, the sun. But at least kind of along the bottom where it was touching the ground, uh, we're going to want a little bit of this. Okay, so let's grab some cadmium yellow light now. And I'm liking how this is working with the fan brush, so I'm going to stick with the fan brush for now. And then I'm going to use some of this. This has still got that green in it, so I'm just mixing yellow into it now. So it's making this kind of an olive green color. This would be a good additional. There's all kinds of different greens going on in here. So this will just be a good one to kind of add in. If it's not bright enough, we can add a little bit of white to it too. use the corner of the brush to kind of get some irregular shapes happening in it. <clears throat> if you lay down flat you can get more of a line. You get more of a straight line but if you use the corner of it you get little more blobby shapes. Well, that's a technical term. Blobby shapes. <clears throat> I personally know that shape. <laughs> Me too. Kind of get that blobby shape. Right. I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite shape. Good, I'm glad because <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it together, hun. I think it's called man or dad bod <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> Blobby shape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going with a little bit of the unbleached titanium here to get some lighter color. I'm going to use this sparingly because I don't want to overwhelm my painting with a bunch of light spots. But I do want a few in there. I'm going to use my finger to blend that out a little bit. And I'm going to flip up with it just a little bit to get some kind of grassy looking shapes happening. And one of the keys to doing this kind of any kind of grasses is just keep it random so you don't want to have it in a straight line you don't want to repeat your shapes or have your grasses all lined up in a in a row you know you're going to end up with this artificial kind of looking line here so to avoid that you go one up there one down below one up high one down below and you're overlapping your areas Going back and forth, up and down, so that you get all of these multiple levels of action happening. Okay, adding some. Get the skin all blobbed up. Man, blobs the word of the day. Blob is the word of the day. Okay. Today's secret word is blob. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a giveaway. <laughs> that could be. You put the put blob a, in the comments. That could be a question. Oh, really? We're going to well, do this live? Well, not right now. Like oh. later. You know, come back. Oh. That way, they'll have to have watched, you know, at least, at this least far an in, hour uh, into it. Or how long or, have we been painting? An hour and a half. Or some of our viewers who fell asleep waiting and then woke up in the middle of it. <laughs> not naming any <laughs> name. <laughs> Christy. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> she was there at the beginning, though. I have to say, she was there. It wasn't her fault. Because she was like, well, 
I'm going back to bed because when I <laughs> said it was going to be another 30 minute. So, okay, that is not working. Okay, so we're going to blob it up in the comments, and then what are they going to get? I don't know. What should we, what should we give away? Uh, I got this rubber band we over should here. Give away, we'll give away uh, the link to the show tomorrow. How's that? <gasps> Ooh. But then what if they already have... If they're already part of Patreon. they're already part of Patreon. Well, that wouldn't work out then very no, well. Then I don't know. Then we'll work out something else. Like I said, I got this rubber band over here. So. <laughs> You're going to give away a rubber band? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. You don't think so? No. You don't think they'll go for that? No. You know, I thought I was going to need some of these brushes, but I don't know if I am. I haven't used any of them. Let's use this brush for some of this grass because it's the, that uh, hand brush is one cutting it. So I'm going to use the angle brush. This is a quarter inch angle brush and I'm going to sit it down and can I go up over, do some of these grasses. Some of these ones that I want a little bit more detailed that are closer to us. Only in this foreground area here. <clears throat> On this side, I'm gonna get more of my yellow. And actually, we'll grab some of this orange because that'll look good with my. have a lot of this moss growing in. Oh, this is pretty. I like to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Looking good though. And bring this green right down into the water right here. A little bit on this rock here. So we did the darker green. Now we're just kind of putting some highlights on it. These ones have like moss on them and kinds of things growing on them. These rocks. If it's too obvious, you can just use your finger to kind of tap it off. Yeah, I was actually wondering earlier if you were going to be adding the green mossy. Oh yeah, I got the green. Yeah, we're going to run out of time before we even get to flowers. So, darn it. I'm still, no over, thing. I'm still over here trying to think of a giveaway. You know me, I want to go simple. You work on it. I got to talk it over with you well, first before I mention Well, that's what I'm saying. The, oh, okay. What? What? I'll write it down. Okay. I like it. It's looking good. 
It was fun. I don't do a lot of landscapes. I really need to do more. We did a vote. Um, and uh, in my actually here on Facebook or on YouTube, I did a a little informal like poll last month. And the number one thing people said they wanted to see more of was landscapes. So here we go. So this is going to be where I'll have three this month. This will be next week. We'll do another waterfall with lupine, which is the flower for the month of July. So there you go. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations, lupine. <laughs> you did it. pick from the comments and then we can okay. get their email address. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'd have to figure that out. Yeah. I don't think that would work. You don't think so? Well, not last minute like this. I want to think about it. Okay. <sighs> okay. So just tapping in this color. I love it. It's so pretty. <laughs> we haven't done anything with the water yet. Water of the flowers. Oh, we'll do the flowers. They're not going to take very long. We'll do the water now. We'll let that green set. But we've got all of our basics in now. So now we can work on the water. So I'm going to use, uh, let's see, let's use the thalo blue and white. I might add just a tiny touch of the, of the burnt sienna. That'll neutralize it a little bit so it's not so blue, 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 in your face blue. We've got all these nice colors going on in here in our water. Um, if we want to, we can go in. Actually, before we start, I think I will. I'm going to use a little bit of this green here. Maybe mix it with a little bit of that blue and just add some of the green into our water, just in a couple of places. It's just picking up the green. And I wanna go lighter than what we already have down there because we have the ultramarine blue or the, um, oh, this is pretty. The yellow blue and burnt it already in there, right? So. We're going to use this lighter blue. I'm going to go side to side with it. Go right up next to my rocks, but not quite over the top of that brown, that dark area. So I want to leave a little bit of the dark. Let me zoom in. Don't tell Mark you left. Okay. Shh. I'll stay on camera, I promise. Famous last words. All right. The key is just going side to side. This running water, we're going to have ripples and all kinds of things happening in the water, but basically you're going to be seeing this kind of side to side. It's going to be picking up the light and casting it in these kind of... I went right over the top of my rock. Why did I do that? There we go. He's back. I love it. 
Okay. So down here, I'm just going to kind of very lightly drag it. So I'm getting kind of some broken lines happening. Go right up to the edge of the using the tip of my brush here just to kind of do some zigzaggy lines I like it okay so there's some kind of white water happening around these rocks here so I'm just going to use the white and my tip of my brush tap in you could use your fan brush too I zoomed in without you and so I told on myself. I told them not to tell you, but you're writing yourself out. Huh? I'm writing myself out. Yeah. Okay, little bits of white happening in some of these areas where there might be some ripples in the water or a little bit disturbance. Little, I lost this little section back here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I brought this rock up a little higher than it needed to be, but... All right. And down here, there's a bunch of... Kind of churning side to side motion here. As we get closer, you're going to have bigger, bigger splashes, bigger, uh, bigger lines in your water. Okay, I like it. It's looking good. All right, so let me switch to my... Well, no, I think I'm going to stick with that brush. It seems to be working okay. Okay, Chad wanted to know, were you going to be highlighting the sides of the trees? Oh, yeah, I need to do that. Thank you. Yes. So that's like the bird feet of this video. Exactly. Remind me. I just wanted to let that dry, though. I could pretend like I knew, I remembered. Just let that dry. We'll come back to it. Don't you worry. Never fear. All right, so I've got the zinc white here. So this is the transparent white. It'll give it a little bit more of a translucency. Um, so I'm going to add it in a couple places where I want this water. To look like it's flowing through, but maybe you can still see some little bit of it, a little bit of the background, whatever color is showing through. So using that zinc white will just help us get that effect. We'll have to, don't have to work as hard. Okay, so this is coming down this way. And then this whole thing has got, especially right here, we've got a whole section right here and there that's coming down. Then we got some down here. Doing a lot of sighing. I'm just having technical issues over here. Don't mind me. Okay. Well, I can't ignore it when you're like. <sighs> <sighs> oh, there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mind me. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> okay. See how pretty that zinc white does? So we can still see through it. It just makes it look like water. Uh, which is the kind of the goal here, right? I guess. 
So. Now we're going to go with the bright white. This is where we could splatter. We could use our fan brush if we wanted to. I'm just going to use the very tip of this brush. And I'm going to dab, dab, dab. Little dots. Little bitty dots. Highlight some of this water. Make it look splashy. I definitely think we could do, let's do some fan brush action here. I think it'll Give us that look we're going for. Yeah, here we go. Oh, it was off camera, Dad. So I want the splash happening behind my rock, not on top of it. So I'm just going to cover it with my finger here. See where else we want to do it, right in here, maybe. good I think. I'm going to go back in with some brighter whites in some of these areas and just add a little bit of highlight but there's not a lot of the white really bright back in here. It's pretty pretty dark. The water, think of the water like a mirror almost. You know it's going to pick up the colors and things around it so if we've got an area where the the water and everything is very dark then our water you know our water is not going to be bright blue it's going to be picking up all these darker colors that are around it i'm going to pick up some of this green put bring that down into the water back in here maybe this area is more green let's get those shadows happening back there okay Pretty, pretty. Let's add some flowers. Oh, okay. Let's do our highlight on our tree, too, first. So let's use the... I don't know if I have any of this green left. Thalo green, black, and let's get some cadmium yellow light. Still fairly dark. It's not going to be super bright. side of that tree there. All these. Try to kind of get it in the same spot where we got our dark branches. The 
just keeping it on that highlight side. I can just go a little bit brighter with it. titanium you want to keep your pine trees fairly dark though they're pretty pretty dark in general so you don't have to add a lot of highlight color to them it doesn't take much okay that looks good let's add some of this color to our hillside too anytime I'm introducing a new color I just want to add it in a couple other places just helps kind of unify the whole painting and then we don't have any kind of random colors just kind of sticking out in the middle of nowhere on their own. Some phthalo green, a little bit of burnt umber, and wash some shadows into our hillside in a couple of places. So I'm just going to go in some of these areas that we already have our color. Now you may not need to do this, but I've got some areas where, like at the bottom of some of these grasses, where it just seems like there's a little bit too much of the light color, no shadow. So Maybe put some shadow area behind these trees here where there might be some shadow on that hillside. So we got the uh, difficulty level question. Um, I think this one's probably mid difficulty level, you know. Uh, yeah, probably. I was going to say about six. Yeah, six something to like seven that. Out of ten. Yeah. I think so. Many different techniques being yeah. used and the fan brush seems like people the are fan a little, brush can be a little bit little tricky. Scared. Yeah, the fan brush can be a little tricky, so um it's probably good. Six is probably a good number, I would say. Definitely wouldn't like try this on your first go. One of the things that I you know I've mentioned before, but it bears repeating, um, you know, you would not start painting or you wouldn't start like skiing on a diamond slope. You would crash and burn and you'd have a lot of frustration, maybe some broken bones. Who knows? <laughs> Fortunately, painting is a little bit more forgiving, but uh, you, you know, you definitely could have the same kind of frustration levels. If you start working on something before you're kind of quite ready for it. So just keep that in mind. You know, go slow. You don't have to jump into some of these projects that are more difficult right off the bat. Maybe give yourself a few paintings in between, you know, when you first start. Just to build up your experience level and build up your, you know, confidence and whatever. I think people think that if they try to jump into a painting like this and they don't, they can't do it quite, you know, right off the bat, that there's something wrong with them or that they don't have talent for it. So they give up, you know. So I, w I don't want somebody to try a painting like this before they're ready for it and then get frustrated and say, oh, well, I can't paint. I, I knew I couldn't paint. I, you know, you can do this kind of painting. You, you totally can. It just takes a little practice. And so if you start on, you know, one of the more simple paintings that is not so complicated as this one, um, you know, then you might uh, have less frustration. I don't know what I'm trying to say. That makes sense. Okay. 
I think I'm going to switch to the number two round here for our flowers. So just added some dark areas back in. Shadowed the highlights. It's all kind of a matter of going back and forth between the shadows, highlights, shadows, highlights. You know, you don't want to have too much of one. I'm going to gloss over some of this here with the glaze over some of that area, deepen that that's burnt umber and ultramarine and go over some of these water areas and just sit in some of these shadows go over some of these bright white areas maybe tone them down just a little bit if needed I just felt like like right there it was just too bright <clears throat> brought that shadow this whole area is kind of in shadow so just needed to shadow that water right there okay I really like how this is turning out very pretty all right so now what we just do all kinds of flowers whatever we want here I'm gonna grab some quinacridone magenta Cadmium red, mix those together and make kind of a bright cherry red, a little bit more on the quinacridone side, this is getting dry, not wanting to, you might want to save your paints and put these out fresh at the very end, here you don't need them until now. Do some bright ones right in here. What? I like your sound effects sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the fan brush. For some of these that are farther away I'm just going to tap in with the fan brush so it looks like we got some little clusters of flowers and, and flowers will grow in these little clusters too. If you look if you've ever looked at a field of flowers you know from far away there'll be these little little gatherings of the same color, they all kind of like to party together. So, all the same kind of flowers will be gathered, and then there'll be a different color next to them. Kind of, they're all sort of intermingling, but they grow in these little clumps. Okay. Maybe they're berry bushes. I don't know. Who knows what they are. I'm going to add some white. Make a pink. And add some of that in too. I'm trying to keep the bottoms fairly flat like we talked about before. You're looking at these from farther away, they're going to be kind of more flat on the bottom ish. These farther away, I'm going to be smaller, less detailed. And then the ones closer can be a little bit bigger, so I'm pressed down a little bit harder on these ones that are closer. So the flowers look like they're bigger 
as they get closer to us, they're going to get bigger. You're being awfully quiet over there. You're just you're dazzled by the flowers. You're like, oh, flowers! I yes. am. I was waiting for this. It's just waiting for the flowers. It's the the time. highlight of my morning. Exactly. Or now, afternoon. <laughs> Here. Let's do a little bit of orange here and there. You can put as many or as few flowers as you want. We can have this whole thing covered with flowers if we want. And actually, you can't really see it, but the flower, the this, the picture does have a ton, ton of flowers. It's all yeah, well, little white flowers and a few little pink and purple ones too. So. The ones that are closer to us, I'm going to make more vibrant. The ones that are a little farther away, I'm not going to do quite as bright. So I'm going to do this bright orange real close up here. Keep it. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing in one. There we go. Okay, so now it's starting to come, come together. I feel like I got a little too much of the same, same happening right here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of greenery in over the top there. Just tap in, pull up. So if you've got any flowers that just look like they're floating and aren't connected to anything, you can just tap a little bit of that green over them. It'll push them back. Like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> hold your horses there. Nelly. Let's get some of this yellow. We'll add some white to it. Yep, I think the sky was a good decision. I think so too. I'm liking it better with the blue up there. I just think it, mm -hmm. it, it makes it more cheerful looking. The other was kind of dark, you know, a little bit somber. This is much more kind of happy. Happy little creek with happy little flowers. Little dots of white here. Again here, keeping it random is the key. You want to you want to cluster these in kind of groups so they look more natural interprets dots as flowers. I'm not doing any detail on these at all. I'm just setting these down as dots. But your eye is like, oh, that's flowers. They see the, you know, your your eye sees the green. It sees the, you know, the context of where it's at and it interprets it. It's amazing how that works with painting, but we can kind of get away with a lot by just, you know, taking advantage of what our eye already thinks it's seeing, you know, if that makes sense. I don't know, but. I love it. Love, love, love. Okay, so real close to us, if we want to, we can, you know, we can go into a little bit more detail, maybe do some little, like, daisy type looking flowers that are, you know, maybe we're seeing 
awesome. use some yellow to emphasize the fact that it's a daisy so just dab in some yellow in some of these and then oh okay that's a daisy flower clusters I'll follow that side down so these are kind of curving down a little bit as they're getting in here maybe do some coming down this way on this side okay let's do some tall purpley spiked flowers this will go along with our lupine that we're doing next week so these can live side by side. Maybe we'll be using similar colors. You want to add white to your purple because otherwise it's just going to look like black. So I'm going to add white to it and then I'm going to grab a little bit more white on one side. So I've got both colors on here and I'm just going to dab in some tall kind of spikes kind of going up over our water. And along the side here, and a little bit darker, just on one side. part of painting right here you do all that work some some parts of the painting are so tedious and you're just like let's just get this over with so we can get to the fun part this is the fun part right here if you were wondering this is where it gets real real fun sorry I'm being weird today Not nor not today. Not anything different. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I knew I was waiting for it. I was just like, <laughs> when is he gonna say it? Three, two. <laughs> okay, I don't want that there. <laughs> I mean, you do like to read, so this right is true. there. Oh, one of my favorite books was on sale yesterday, and I didn't notice it until too late. So if you caught that on Facebook, I. Sh I shared it on Facebook, but uh, Guernsey, I'm so excited because it's coming to Netflix. It's coming, if they made a movie out of it, it's like one of my all-time favorite books. Uh, it's called the, it's got the weirdly, the weirdest title ever. It's called the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Liter yeah, Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I know, it's a tongue twister. <clears throat> but it's set in World War, well, right after World War II, and it's uh, about an island in England that was occupied by um, Germany. It was, it, they couldn't defend it because it was kind of out in the middle of the channel, so it got occupied by the Germans during the war, and... 
Kim claims to have read it. They were able to, well, they were able to kind of um, get around some of the um, rules of occupation by having a book club. So they were able to kind of meet together because they weren't allowed to meet, uh, you know, in case they were planning stuff. And uh, it, it gave them a chance to kind of gather together. Anyhow, I don't know. I'm not explaining it very good, but it's a love story. It's one of the best books ever. Did Kim like it? It's so good. It's really re- oddly written too, because it's in uh, it's in letters. That's the whole the whole thing is written in letters. So it's not like normal narrative. It's like hmm. it's like some, somebody writing back and forth to each other, explaining what happened. So, all right, I'm going to call that good. We got lots of flowers in there. I think we filled filled it up. Lots of pretty flowers. Lots of fun stuff going on. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you to... Ooh, got super chats to talk about. All right. I get to do it at the end now. Nice. Yeah, we had several super chats today. Awesome. So you had five, six, seven, eight, nine. What? Nine super chats here. Let me nice. go back and uh, find out all who it was and if their messages. So we had Janice, and she said, great way to start the weekend. Then we had Cindy, uh, no special message, but thank you so much, Cindy and Janice. And then same for Nancy. There was no message, but a super chat donation. And let's see. Then we had Maureen. She says, love all the techniques you teach us with every new show. Angela and Mark, you are an amazing duo. Aww. Almost like the dynamic duo. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Randy. No message special there, but thank you so much. And then from Sandy, she said, stunning. Thank Ooh. you for another great tutorial. Glad you liked it, Sandy. And then we had a donation from Miss A. Ponder. And then from Karen. She, Karen said, love it. And then Patricia donation. And that was all the donations. So thank you wow. so much to all of thank you. Thank you guys. That's we awesome. Really appreciate all the support. We appreciate your generosity for sure. It keeps us, keeps us Keep, in, uh, paint. keeps us going, in paint lights. and yeah. supplies and <laughs> all that good stuff. Internet. So we can do this. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm looking, been looking at, uh, New components Sorry, for. I don't know why I'm still messing with this. It felt dark right there, but I don't. Computers like and that. stuff like so that, so we can get a better quality show going here. Yeah, <coughs> we're obviously gonna have to buy a new cable for our, our camera. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's just the cable and not the video card, because that would have been bad. Yeah, the video card is like a thousand dollars, so yeah, the cable shouldn't cable. be that much. No, no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to (laughs) stop. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow if you're part of our Patreon. How do they join Patreon, and what does that mean? Uh, Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Go there. It has all the information. Uh, It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, The link is down in the description if you're looking for it. And... uh, there's different levels to support the channel. You get little perks as a thank you. So dollar you get traceables. Uh, Five dollars you get the re- reference photos and a bonus video once a month. And the ten dollars you get a Facebook group where I also do special. Uh, they get to pick different projects and we paint them live once a week in there. So longer projects. So anyhow, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So it's not too late to join. Nope. In, in fact, uh, we had at least one, if not two people during the show today sign up for Patreon. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Awesome. Uh, we'll look for the links yes. to the video tomorrow. I wanted to do one more thing. Now oh, that I'm of, course you, of course I, you did. I just realized I wanted to go back in with my rocks and put in just a few really bright highlights in a couple spots. Um, so, yeah. See how that's going to brighten them up real bright. Um, 
Yeah, there's a link. There's a there's a post on in Patreon with the link. So if you've just joined, you can look for that link, that post. It was last month. I'm going to go ahead and post again today and send out an email to everybody that's a, at that level so that they'll make sure that they have that link in case you don't know where to find it. But Yeah, because it's an unlisted link. Right, so it won't show up on my channel right. page. So there we go. A little bit brighter. Just making those stick out just a little bit more. Just a few of them. Not all of them. All right. There we go. Done. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks. Bye.